Hi everyone, this is Annalisa with Inside Real Estate and I'm hoping you can hear my voice and now you should be able to see my screen. It should be just a dashboard right in front of you. If you could let me know in the GoToWebinar questions uh, that you can see my screen and hear me, I would really appreciate it. That way I know we're good to go. And also today, it's a little different. There's not a plan per se on what to speak to. I wanted to give you folks a chance to ask me questions on, hey, how does this custom text code work? What can I do with it? Or how do I create a squeeze page for this or a landing page for that? Uh, so I really wanna give you the opportunity to kind of type some questions in, see if I can answer some questions. And of course, if it's more technically oriented, I'll need to refer that to support potentially. Uh, but I wanted to give you a chance just to ask questions about things that might be on your mind um, and go from there. And thank you, Stephen and Brad for verifying you can see and hear me. So has there been anything on anyone's mind on what you've been seeking to learn about different tools with NK Plus? Do you need like a refresher on maybe like a, the visuals on what you can pick up on on a daily basis for uh, making out calls or how to glean information off specific accounts? I can see a lot of people have jumped in but are uh, no questions yet. So I guess what I'll do here is the first thing I'm going to do is just walk over some of the things to look for on your K plus dashboard that can lead you to some good information. <laughs> Brad, any good information is good information. I agree. I am one to ask questions all the time. And if I can't find the answer, I bulldog it until I can. Um, okay, so here's what I used to do when I was a user of K plus a little way, way, way ago. So what I would do is I would pop in every morning and, and my role was an inside sales associate for eight agents and a boutique brokerage. And my role was to go in and make the out calls, create the, the alerts and look for information where I could potentially create a conversation or a communication with someone just to kind of, you know, get them to respond. So the first thing I would do every day is I jump into my dashboard and I would look across at my updates here across the top and I could see somebody sent me a question about a property and someone sent a showing request. So I would try to knock those out first. And the neat thing here is you just jump into them and they're gold or red if you have not closed them. And what you can do is go in here and you can see, okay, the lead was on Elisa. Oh, she's been waiting quite a while. Uh, but you can see that there's been these, re these requests that have gone out. And then they were inquiring about this property here. So what I always do is I right click on that and I open the link in a new tab. That way I'll still have my question in front of me and I have a new tab with that property in front of me. So now I can go back and forth and take a look at the property uh, as well as answer questions. So I'm informed on what I might be speaking to about the property. And then I can either add a reminder in for myself to follow up. I can write in my response. And then I click submit. And when I click on submit, the system is going to close this task and it's going to turn that task green. And it may take just a moment here for that to update. So now you can see the gold question tile is gone, but the showing one is still here. If we wanted to go back and see that showing information real quick, all we need to do is just look to the left for your activity stream. And this is going to show you everything that your contacts have looked at, at in the past five days. So this is kind of like where you, if you're like a, a person that works out or you run, you know, you take your pulse, right? So this is like the pulse of your dashboard. What's the health of my dashboard? Do I have people coming in and looking at properties? Do I have questions I need to answer? Uh, what's, what do I need to do? So we can see here that these green ones, these have been completed, knocked out. I still need to go back and answer this one here. So I can actually click into it, do the same thing like I did for the question. I can open up the MLS number if I like. I can respond back about the date working fine, schedule, cancel, write a response, and submit it to close it out. 
So it's super important you jump into these and close out the tasks. Now these get triggered when your contacts land wrong, when they land on your website. So when you've got a contact on your website and they want to ask questions, uh, they can do so via a listing. Oh, I got a question here, it looks like. Can you show us how to set up a squeeze page on Google? Uh, well, Bruce, I can show you where you can go to learn how to do the DIY Google. I can show you how to create a squeeze page, but when it comes to the do-it-yourself uh, advertising, that's something we actually have a tutorial set up for uh, in our core learning portal. So I'll loop back to that in just a moment here. So when we're looking at a property on KB Core and people are doing the details, the contacts have the ability here to save the property by clicking the heart. And when they do that, you're going to be apprised of that because the saved property on their uh, profile is going to be a rectangle instead of a square. They can send you a question. And of course, it's gonna ask you to log in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that real quick here so I can show you what's happening as we go. Because this will reflect on my own uh, database too since I'm a I'm a customer of my customer of myself. Uh, so you can send in a question as a contact. You can uh, go, ask to go visit the property and so forth. And of course you'll learn about other aspects of the property. Now when we're looking at the dashboard, if I go back to this and refresh it, we should see a little new activity that's popped in on this activity stream. Okay, so you can see those two properties, or the one property I should say I just looked at is right here. And then this is another property that I looked at as a different user yesterday. So whenever somebody saves a property, whether it's on the activity stream or the activity tab on that particular contact, if they saved it, that property will be a rectangle. So that's a visual cue for you to say like, okay, they have an invested interest in this, they've saved it purposely, I should call about it. Um, another neat thing you can do is if they visited the property five times or more, it'll also turn into a rectangle uh, indicating a higher level of interest. So if you wanted to give someone a call about this, you would just click on the photo. It'll take you right to that person's uh, contact file. And you can look at their activity tab here, and that'll show you everything they've looked at since they became a customer uh, within your database on K+. Now, sometimes you might uh, call on one of these and maybe you open it and it's contingent or pending or something. Uh, what you can do, actually for any of these listings, you can do this, but if it's contingent pending, you know, you can also look at, uh, like for 53 land or if they were, they're wanting and it's contingent. Well, you could scroll down and you can see all of these similar listings. So all of these here are similar in the look and feel 253 landers. So you can provide alternatives if you can see this one might be going under contract. You can also, let's say you want to get them out and they want to go see Lander Street. You can also click on this nearby tab. And all of these homes and properties are within two miles of the property we're looking at currently. So you can have a couple of these in your back pocket if this particular property at 53 Lander didn't work out, maybe. Farrington, Liberty, North Miller, Hasbrook, Will. So you have all of these different types of uh, information grabs you can uh, glean and look at. You can also say, hey, you know what? 167 Ann Street was just listed and send them that information. So you have the ability to jump in and send them something they haven't seen, which is pretty handy. Now, if you wanted to send this to someone, let's say we looked at uh, Oregon Trail and we wanted to just send them that property. So we can just click on whatever that property is, and then you can click on what would you like to do and email it directly to that contact right off of your dashboard. And when you click on this, we'll open up the Gmail of which you are synced and actually write a quick message for you. And of course you can go in and edit this to your liking, but it'll drop a link in to that particular property leading people right back to your website. And there is a big dramatic pause happening with my Y, apparently. It's a big reveal. Here it comes, I think.
I'm going to give it two seconds, and if not, I'm going to move on. Okay, so it's not going to load up right now, but um, it will. And normally it would. There we go. I'm just way up in the mountains, uh, and my Wi-Fi is a little spotty today, and it still hasn't loaded completely. There's going to be a link that's going to land here regarding that property. Okay, so the things you can glean, the you know, activity stream, it gives you the ability to see what everybody's looked at, if they've asked questions, have you followed up? Uh, what's, you know, what is important, what isn't, you know, this square means they've looked at the property, <clears throat> any photo means they've looked at it, the rectangle means they've either saved it or viewed it five times or more, and there's also these little color keys here at the top left, so if one of these was outlined in purple instead of white, that would indicate a property in relation to the brokerage of which you belong. Now, if it was outlined in like a gold or a yellow color instead of white, that will indicate that property is pending or contingent. So that could be one of those where if you look at one they've favored it or even just looked at briefly and it's con pending contingent, it gives you a good excuse to call them, let them know and say, hey, I just shot you over a couple of uh, additional listings that are similar. I'll call you back to like, to see how what you thought about them. So it gives you that opening. All right. Um, another place you can look for opportunity is your notifications tab here across the top. So you've got all these little icons here. The first one on the left is your notifications tab. And this can also give you a reason to call someone to follow up. Uh, so when a contact shows specific behaviors like saved a listing, or maybe they have uh, saved a listing, but the price goes reduced, uh, if they unsubscribe from emails, if they request more information, if they've come back after being gone for two weeks or more, the system's designed to track all of this for you and let you know. So for, for instance here, at this point, at one point, Annalisa saved a listing, but now that listing has gone off the market. That means that K Plus recognized the listing went off the market and we automatically sent Annalisa an email saying, hey, heads up, this is off the market. Are you still looking for something similar, et cetera? And when we click into this to open up that contact, we can also scroll down to the bottom here and you'll see these notifications and this will show you all of the notifications that have triggered for this particular contact so there's some pretty neat little things in here just to give you some clues we can see here we sent the daily listing alert we sent a monthly valuation uh, you know we can see different aspects of information and we can also grab this and drag it down to see the system email saved the listing reduced listing off market and so forth so you've got all of these little uh, clues to look for. And the last one I'd say when you're looking at a particular contact and you want to make sure they're using millions mapped or they're looking on their mobile, you know, they're going on their mobile to look. If you go down this left hand side of your dash, you'll see this additional info section. And there is this uses mobile. Now, if they are using their mobile to look at properties, that will be checked off. If they aren't, there's going to be an X there. So I know a lot of folks on like day two, they kind of have it in as a task to remind them to do this uh, within a drip campaign or they just mentally know, uh, but they will go into the contacts on day two. And if there is an X there, they'll actually go into what would you like to do? And then email or text millions mapped to that particular contact. Now, if they don't have a phone number attached, it's not going to have the text option there we can kind of get the idea that you can have that built in as part of your branding and part of your uh, initial contact to shoot that millions mapped out to the folks. And if you're going to text it, you just click on it, it'll immediately text uh, or email us the same thing as emailing that listing uh, just a minute ago. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move over to how to create a squeeze page. Uh, and then if anybody else has any other questions, feel welcome to drop those in and, and uh, we'll work our way through those. All right, so let's go into lead gen on the bottom, towards the bottom left on the dash and build squeeze page. Now, the cool thing about this is this pulling in targeted information from the MLS of which you're connected via your team, your office, your brokerage. So we're always getting updated content and pulling it and it's live data. So every time we pull a squeeze page with these targeted uh, aspects and somebody clicks on the link we're creating, that information is updated all the time. So we can actually create these. And as long as we have the K plus site and we're all connected to K plus, it's 
going to work and it's going to send them that, that up-to-date information right to your website. Now the first section up here speaks to tracking measures and it's super important that you at minimum add a hashtag onto your uh, squeeze pages. A hashtag is a tool that's going to help you organize your contacts as well as uh, trigger information out to specific groups or targets within your contacts, as well as target uh, drip campaigns or search alerts. So there's a lot you can do with a hashtag. Uh, hashtags live over here to the left, just above lead gen a bit. And this folder here is something I would liken to like a giant gray metal filing cabinet. However, it lives in KD Core. Every, I'm sorry, KV Core, sorry, K plus. Uh, so every hashtag within K plus is like a manila folder you're dropping folks into so you can easily find them. So when I was a user, I'd be like, okay, well, um, I created a squeeze page for uh, people in Orange County, New York, looking for homes with a fenced yard for their dogs. So I created a squeeze page called Orange Fetch to remind me it was all about people looking for room to have their dogs. So when I would tap on this, anyone who responded to Orange Fetch, which I don't think I have one in here right now, will land, oh, I do have myself, there we go, will land right here as a list of people interested in that particular element. You can create a hashtag to basically track anything you need it to. You can even manually create one for things that you need to track yourself. So, you know, uh, it's super handy for you to utilize these. You can recognize what's working, what maybe I need to change something up if it's not working uh, and keep track of this information. So when you're utilizing a hashtag on that squeeze page, you know, make sure it's something that you can come back to and recognize why you created it. What was, what was the function and, and meaning behind this hashtag? So let's say I want to create an Orange County um, places with pools, right? So I could just call it orange pools. And when I create this link and then I disperse it out to my social media, whenever somebody signs up, they'll automatically be hashtagged orange pools. Orange pools will land over here as a new tag and everybody within it who responded is gonna land within that tag bucket. Now I can also create a source code here. And a source code is basically the element that allows you to track how successful was this ad? What was my uh, click per sign up rate? You know, if this is something that's not even on your radar right now, I wouldn't worry about it. It's not a necessary thing to have right now. Uh, if you're starting to get into tracking your AB uh, results, this might be something you're gonna wanna work a source code into. Now the source codes are available for you to view at the bottom of the section where it says advertise stats. And it's all on this same page. You can actually scroll down to the very bottom and see your advertising results. And this is going to tell you how did they look at it, how many visits, how many leads, what was my sign up rate. And mine's going to be really poor because it's a test account, it's not going anywhere. Uh, but what you can see, if we look at the side here, it's like, okay, this one person came to Facebook and looked at a grid view. These people looked at a list view. These people looked at a map view on my website. Uh, and it'll kind of tell you what did they look at, how did they look at it, how many visits did it garner, how many leads did it garner. So you can keep an eye on this uh, if you'd like. Uh, but if you're just getting into this, I wouldn't give it another thought until you've got your head wrapped around more of the basics. That would be my advice. All right, let's go back up to the top. Now, the next thing we can do here after we have our source, which is optional or hashtag, like if I wanted to create a source code for this, I would probably call it, I'm going to post it only to Facebook, so I would put FB in there, and then I would just call it the same thing I did uh, with my tag. So my source code, I'm only putting it on Facebook, and it's for the people looking for pools in Orange County only. That way I can look at this and know what the results and how they were driven. So now I can identify my area. So I can either start typing in the city, county, neighborhood, uh, school, MLS number, zip code, and then choose it. And I can actually drop in additional areas. So it's more than one. So if I wanted to add in like Sullivan County, I could do that too. Or a zip code or a school or what have you. 
Now, if I don't want to have these in here and I wanna draw a map instead, because it's either or, either choose an area or a map, I can click on draw area on map, and I can actually create a custom pixel map, which is pretty cool. All I need to do is click on my little polygon tool at the top, click onto my map to anchor my dot, and everywhere I click is giving it an anchor spot. So maybe I wanna go all the way up here kind of along this river to a certain point. You know, I could create a custom view and click apply, and now you'll see it's going, okay, well, we don't have any physical areas chosen because we created a map. So it's telling you that we're gonna be using this map area. Now from here, you can go in and choose the types of properties. And this may vary based on the MLS of which you are connected. If you don't see a type in here that you're used to seeing, please call support uh, or chat with them and let them know and they should be able to help you. So you can go in and add as many of these as you want. Maybe you accidentally hit commercial, no big deal. You just click the X to get rid of it. Uh, you can drop in your price minimax, which is pretty darn handy. And then you can drop in your bed minimax. And options is pretty neat. If you click into this and choose one of these, you can actually get a more targeted feel for the data you're pulling. Uh, the two that really bring in the most hits usually are foreclosures and reduced because everybody likes a deal. Uh, so those are kind of fun, but you can go through here and pull all water view, waterfront, pool, et cetera. Now, if I leave the options as none, when I build my link, the system is going to pull every single matching property with these results and put them onto one clickable link. And if it's a big area, like a county, that could be a lot of listings. Uh, or I could go in and say, well, I just wanna see all of those homes that have a pool. Now, the Facebook cover option, this really isn't a big deal. I would, you know, you have options here. You can either use one of the listings from the search results, which I would say 99% of our users utilize. Uh, it's going to be pulling that content from your MLS and using one of those results as the cover photo. Uh, or you can use a recent listing photo from your own agency and the system picks these. A low price listing from your agency, high price or random from your agency. Uh, the thing is, you know, if we choose one of those, it may not be indicative of you know, homes in Orange County with a pool in this instance. I usually just leave this at use list listings from search results. And last but not least, you can actually change the registration gate for people. So uh, myself, I was always an immediate person. Uh, I know there's certain circumstances where you might wanna delay it by one, two, three, uh, you know, or maybe you're going to send a squeeze page out to people who are already in your system. You could create a squeeze page and set it to never. That way you'll still get the tag and know they looked at it, but they're not going to have to be gated, right? Uh, so you can set your gate. So I'm going to say they can look at, you know, two property views, and then it's going to say, hey, I need you to log in. So now I have this set up with my source code to track my A to B testing, uh, my hashtag so I can track the group of folks and send them uh, specialized content. I'm going to pull everything for single family and condos in this map between 175 and 450, three bed, one and a half bath with a pool. And we're gonna build the link. So this is really a, a two-step process. We build the link and then we share it. So right now, the system is telling me there are 159 properties that match the description that I dropped into the system. Now all we need to do is drop our, place our cursor into this box, highlight it and copy it. So it's a two-stepper, you create it, then you just uh, disperse it. So we got to jump in here, copy it. And now we can go over to our Facebook group, uh, wherever we want to post this on the internet, maybe it's our own uh, Facebook business page, what have you, uh, but now we can actually drop that link in. Okay, okay, Comcast with dramatic pauses today. Thanks, Comcast. Okay, let's see here. <clears throat> okay, so you're gonna paste your link in. And 
nine times out of 10, Facebook will give you a preview image here. Sometimes they do not. It's something we have no control over. We've been trying to work with them on uh, getting this fixed for quite some time and they don't see a problem. Uh, so we're continually trying to help them understand our point of view on that to help you guys out. Uh, so sometimes when you do this, you may not see a preview image here, but we, we can't control that. As long as you see your subdomain here, you will be just fine. So this is all about me, the agent, Annalisa, orangeecomls.com, single family condos in Orange uh, County. So once this is here, I can get rid of this link that I pasted in. And this is where I can drop in my information. So maybe this is you know, like property search of the day. Oh my goodness. So it could be property search of the day, you know, pools in Orange County. I can't spell all of a sudden, but you get what I'm saying. And then you can just click the post and away it goes. So it's going to post into the discussion group here. And this is an example of a squeeze page. So your contacts are going to be developing through Facebook or wherever you happen to post this, you're going to click on it. And I set it for uh, two property views, so it's gated at two. Of course, I'm already signed in here at the top left, uh, but just so you're aware. And you can see here, it's pulling in uh, this area, this pixel area, or this polygon area. And then every one of these little dots in here indicates how many properties are within those dots. So if we click on the 14, it's then going to show us where all of those scatter out. And then I don't know if we can see a school mortar board in this one or not. Um, if you see a school, like a cap, which I'm not sure we're going to see one right now in the area we're in. Uh, so you've got these little houses, of course, that have the house icon. But if you happen to see a little cap, uh, that's going to indicate where the school is in relation to the house location. So hopefully that was helpful. Any questions on squeeze pages? Let's see if anything has come through. I don't see any additional questions. So why don't we go forward and take this squeeze page and create a landing page for it. That way, if uh, you can kind of see how those two can be related. Uh, I usually call this squeezing a landing page. So what we'll do is we will take our squeeze page link right here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that again. And I'm going to open up a Legion landing page. Now these are super cool. You can do a lot with them. Uh, what I'm going to do is open up the default landing page and we're going to create a Legion landing page. Now the neat thing here with these landing pages is when you click on landing page, it opens up this screen because you can now save these, which is tremendously awesome. Uh, when you do save it, it'll tell you what you named it, when you created it, if you added a hashtag to it, what that link was, uh, you can copy the link right here. So if you want to create something and come back again and again and again to use it, you can do that. You can see how many views it's had, how many click-throughs. Uh, mine was an example, so it wouldn't have had any click-throughs. Uh, you can edit, you can clone it, or you can delete it, or even keyword search it if you have a bajillion of them created. So I'm going to go ahead and click Build New Landing Page. And the different templates for these show up at the top left. Uh, my favorite one to use is this lead gen one. So it's the default one that'll open every time you open up the landing page uh, templates. The whole point of this is when you're saying, hey, contact, if you give me your email address and or cell and click this orange button, I am going to give you some information that you, that you need. Uh, and the moment they click this orange button and provide this information, they're immediately landing on your dashboard as a new contact. They're going to be hashtagged if you included one. Uh, so you've got them in there for tracking. When they click this orange button, they're going to be sent to a URL. And we're going to place our squeeze page URL in here. 
So whenever you create a squeeze page, a single property squeeze, maybe it's a, a valuation squeeze page, you can use this within a landing page generator, even a blog link will work in here. You know, any, any link you wanna drop in here to direct people for more information. And it just triggers the second they click the button, they're gonna be sent to that information. So when you're filling one of these out, when you click outside of the box, that's what cements that link to the button. Uh, we can add a hashtag in here. So I know I already created the orange pools. So if I wanna have all of these land on the same hashtag as I created for my squeeze page, so they're all in one grouping, I can use that same hashtag right here. And now I can change my submit button text. So what do I wanna have this orange button say? Maybe it's, you know, uh, swan dive. I don't know, <laughs> but you could, you know, click outside and it's going to drop that text on top of that button. Now, across the top, we've got our hashtag, our call to action on the button, our link. And now we can say, do I want to require the phone or don't I want to require the phone? Completely up to you. So you either check the box in or uncheck it to not require it. And next we can use our background. So the cool thing about the background is we have all of these different canned photos you can utilize. Uh, there is this exterior, uh, there is, you know, super thoughtful lady. Uh, however, there's also the custom backgrounds or your primary MLS images. So if you are an agent and you're creating a single property landing page, you can drop your primary MLS ID in here and it's going to drop in the primary image of that listing into the background. If you want to add a custom background, you can actually grab the URL for that image and drop it here and it's gonna put it in the background. So uh, I'm just gonna do a quick Google search for a, a cannonball into a pool. And of course, uh, I'll always say, hey, make sure that you own the, the photos or have permission to use them. Uh, there's my spiel on that. But basically say we wanna use this cannonball photo right here. Okay. I'm just gonna open up this image on a new tab. So what I'm gonna do, oops, sorry about that, hold on. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and right click, open image in new tab. And that's going to give me the link for the photo. You can see here at the top it ends in JPEG. So we're pulling this photo, this link, we're gonna copy it, and we're gonna go back to our landing page. There we go. And we're going to click background, custom background and drop it in. And when I click okay, we're gonna see that cannibal land in the background, which is pretty slick. Now from here, once we've got this top section nailed, we can move into the body of the information. Now, anywhere you see text, you can edit that information. So this could be like cannonball into your own pool. I don't know, you know, you know, uh, need to need to take a swim. Do you like the inner tube? I don't know. So you could, you know, create something real simple like this. On the secondary line, uh, myself, I always edited this because I would always set people up for daily alerts, unless it was some like, you know, unusual circumstance. And then I can change your town into Orange County and go from there. Now, these little check marks here, they don't do anything. Uh, in, in the terms of leading people somewhere. So they're not going to uh, be clickable and lead people to more information. The only button that does that is this orange one. So these are basically bullets for you to add in additional content you may want to share. Now myself, I was always uh, apt to give them just a teeny, teeny bit of information so they had to click through to get the meat and potatoes, but of course do what you needed to you know, put out there. Uh, if you wanna get rid of a bullet, you just double click it and it's out of there. But it will not come back until you create a new form. So if you delete a bullet and then you're like, oh shoot, I needed that, you're gonna have to start over. So delete those bullets with discretion. 
Uh, okay, so now let's say we are good to go. We know that when the contact clicks this button, they're going to be sent to these squeeze page results. Uh, they're going to be hashtagged with orange pools, so we're good to go. Now, if I want to get rid of my logo, I can double click it, but just keep in mind to check your local MLS services and that it may be a compliance issue if you do remove it. So make sure you're apprised of that locally. Now I can just click save here at the top right. And the system's gonna be like, hey, I need you to name this. So I'm just gonna call it Orange Pools. Why not stick with the theme, right? And I'm gonna click OK. And now it'll say saved. Now what it's doing here, if, if you've used these in the past and you're like, okay, now what? Because I've tried this and it's not working like it did. It's a little different. So what it's going to do is it's going to save it back on your dashboard where we have these. So I'm just gonna update my tab. I'm gonna reload my tab. And now it's updated and the saved link is right here on the dashboard. So when you're looking at the landing page itself, after you've created it, and if you've used these before, you do not use this link anymore. Don't use this link up here anymore. Always go back to your, your dashboard and use the link that is saved on the Legion landing pages and the links within here. And you just have to click this little uh, two sheets of paper to copy that link. Now, if I go back to Facebook and I want to post this, you just paste that link on in there. Nope, I must have copied the wrong one, darn it. Well, you get the idea. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that in there. My goodness gracious. And when, once I get this pasted in, uh, it's going to give us a preview of the page. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. And it's the same deal as with the squeeze page. Sometimes it'll give you a preview, sometimes it will not. Uh, so this is where you can drop in your you know, your message. And so, yeah, here's an example of one where Facebook did not load that pay, that photo in. Now, one thing you can do on your own business pages, uh, you can actually go in and say, like, say I wanted to post it to my test page. You can add in additional photos on business pages, which is pretty nice. Uh, so let's get that open up. So you can drop your link in, which is perfectly fine. And the nice thing here is you can actually click on video photo. And you can say, well, I want to actually uh, create a slideshow. I want to create a photo carousel. I want to upload additional photos or a photo album. So you can utilize those tools within uh, your business page, which is pretty nice. So if I just grabbed a photo and dropped it in there, then I could have custom photos uh, with my landing page to get them there. My goodness, this is slow. I apologize for that. So uh, are there any questions about squeeze pages, landing pages? Let me jump back in here. I don't think there's been any others that have come through. I guess so we can go full circle on this. We're going to create a custom text code for the orange pools. So we have the link we created, uh, which is going to be inside of this custom landing page. So I'm just going to go in here and grab that link. That was that uh, squeeze page we created. And we're going to go back to our dashboard and go to the lead gen tools. And 
custom text codes. Custom text codes are really cool. They utilize and leverage the smart number of which is associated with your uh, team. And whenever you create your own custom text code, you're gonna know exactly what someone was asking about. So if you get a message from somebody from Craigslist saying, hey, um, can I see that house you posted? And you just posted 10 houses, you're not like, whoa, which one? Uh, you can actually create custom text codes that speak to specific things, which is pretty cool. So if we go into the custom text codes, uh, we can create a code. It's a minimum of four characters and cannot start with a numeral. Uh, this code can send people a direct message immediately back that you can create, direct them to an MLS to your site, or even just a link to a URL. And you'll also be able to see how many times somebody has texted that. So if I wanted to create a link for orange pools, um, I'm going to want to shorten my link number one, uh, so it's not taking all of my texting characters. So I'm going to pop over to Bitly and shorten that up. And copy it. And now we will go in and create a custom text code. So basically, I'm going to click Add New. And I'm going to indicate, so anytime someone texts orange pools, I am going to say, Cannonball, here is your list of pools, homes with pools. And then I will submit this. And now we have this set up to where whenever someone uh, texts orange pools to my smart number as an agent, they're immediately going to get sent that list of homes with pools in Orange County. Now, these can also be utilized within uh, Craigslist ads for individual listings. You can put in the MLS number. Uh, so you can see here, like if we have, you know, the custom text code buy, and we just put in the MLS number. So the system will know it's an MLS number when you drop it in here. Uh, that's why we said we don't want you to create any custom text code starting with a numeral because they might get it confused with an MLS number because it's, it's taught, you know, to look for the MLS number. Now, one thing you can do here if, is if you're a showing agent or you're a listing agent, sorry, I said that wrong, uh, you can click like add new because you probably have different types of sign writers out there that you're moving around with all of your different listings. So with your sign writers, you can actually create a code like house one and have that sitting on the sign writer. And then you can put in the MLS number for that property and click submit. And then whenever somebody looks at your sign writer and texts house one to your smart number, they will immediately be sent information about that property. It looks like it didn't quite save before I moved away from it. Oh, because I already have it created. Uh, so basically, you can go in there and create those and you can edit them. Uh, so if you move uh, the sign, you can just go in and edit. So you can pop in and edit the text code and put in the new MLS number right here. So that's a way you can take the information, you know, from your lead gen, you can build a squeeze page, you can build a landing page, you can build a custom text code and have a suite of opportunity uh, for lead gen right here that's basically free unless you decide to do some DIY uh, advertising. And in speaking to DIY and learning, if you jump down here to the bottom left and click the learning portal, you'll be able to access our entire suite of learning in our core uh, learning portal, which is pretty neat. So within, you've of course got the K plus team platform, quick starts and all that good stuff. Uh, but I would really hardly suggest you look at the growth strategies and the marketplace here. Uh, or, and, and if you have a lender, make sure they're hitting this up. They can access this via their, their desk, desktop as well. Uh, so when you look at growth strategies, this is where you're going to find a lot of great information if you're starting to delve into uh, DIY or want to learn more advanced DIY. If you're just getting into it, I suggest you check out this simple social media posting protocol. It is a self-paced tutorial. Uh, they're in like little snippets of two to five minutes. And you can always come back to them and complete them at a later time, revisit them, retake them, what have you. Uh, if you want to have the advertising done for you, you can check out the 
pay-per-click we offer. Uh, I would definitely heartily suggest that you start checking out this generating and converting real estate leads with paid Facebook ads. We have 41 lessons in there and growing. However, uh, one of the big things that's really becoming apparent this year is Facebook's, you know, not as strong as it was, right? Uh, because of the things they changed in their algorithm. So what you can do is you can still utilize this fine, uh, but you can also utilize your list of, con of contacts and retarget them. And it's a different approach to getting a hold of these people and triggering things that land on their timeline to remind them of your brand and remind them that you're available. So some folks have it set up to where the moment somebody hits uh, their business page and they do sign up, well, we send them, of course, you know, the drip campaign and the welcome and all that, but it'll trigger a welcome video to land on that person's time, a little side, the right side, just saying, hi, this is Shane. Thanks so much for stopping by my page. I look forward to speaking with you, blah, blah, blah. So you can create all of those types of calls to action uh, within the system to trigger all sorts of amazingness. And that's actually wrapped up my 45 minutes. This uh, went pretty pretty quickly. Were there any other questions? I haven't seen anything else come through. Hopefully this was helpful to everybody. All right, well, I haven't seen anything new come in or new questions, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up here. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of the week and please never hesitate to ask questions. You can always reach us via chat, bottom right-hand side of your dash. I'm available in the discussion groups and you can also email us support at insiderealestate.com. Have a great day.